Shalom, all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, Bashem Rakakwadash. My name is Yakaba from Plain Tables Camp in Philly. Now, I may name this Warning from the Prophets. Something along those lines. Warning. And this this event happened in First Kings 13th chapter. The summary is you know, this is a, a prophet that was doing the right thing, but then he disobeyed. When he was doing the right thing, he had power with Yahweh. And when he went off, the Lord abandoned him. All right. And he was put to death. So that's pretty much what the uh, what the story entails. Let's just read. It says Acts 13. Uh, wrote, uh, first kings 13 1 and behold there came a man of, the, of god out of judah by the word of yahweh unto bethel and jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense and he cried against the altar in the word of yahweh and said o altar altar thus saith yahweh behold a child shall be born unto the house of david josiah by name and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee so the man of god that came from judah he went he went to uh the northern kingdom this is the, the kingdom was split by jeroboam and Rehoboam. all right so he went so this Judite, or at least of the southern kingdom, went up to where Ephraim was and prophesied against the king. All right. So it says uh, the prophecy here, which was uh, complete in uh, 2 Kings 23. 2 Kings 23, this prophecy comes to pass. All right, we'll, we'll read that. It says, uh, Of the high places that he burnt incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So his prophecy actually was complete in the 23rd chapter, 2 Kings. We'll get to that after we get through this. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which Yahweh hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. All right. And it came to pass when they, when Jeroboam heard this saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him dried up. So it withered. So that that's basically, basically like a death touch. So you he put, try to put his hands on one of the prophets, Jeroboam. And is and it basically degenerated his whole hand, his whole arm. All right, well, it says uh, it says hand. And it says it says uh, so that he could not put it again to him. All right, so maybe it, it, well, it said it dried up. All right, so maybe it turned like to stone. Maybe All right? it says dried up. All right, but he said it was uh, so dry that uh, like when you dry something out. And dehydrated it turns what to like a like a dry leaf like a leaf going through uh the season eventually it dries up and then withers away uh so the altar also was rent i mean it's broken and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of god had given by the word of yahweh and the king answered and said unto the man of god entreat now the face of Yahweh thy God and pray for me that my hand may be restored again all right so his hand got dehydrated all right and he's asking the prophet to restore his hand I right? see the physicians like the herbs won't do anything all right the herbs can, can only do so much and Esau's drugs can only do so much it's really the power of Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai to have command over your health ultimately. And the man of God besought 
Yahweh and the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. The king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half thy house, I would not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For it was charged me by the word of Yahweh, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor return again by the same way that thou comest. All right. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. All right. So when you says disobedient prophet, so basically another prophet said an angel told him to come back with him and he ended up being put to death. But the point here was that when Jeroboam came to touch him, that he immediately, he, he actually could have died. Right? But the Lord, Yahweh didn't want him to die because Jeroboam was a figure, a prominent figure in prophecy. He was being used by the, by the Most High. All right. So only his hand. So he wanted to go lay his hand on the prophet and he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him and his hand which he put forth against him dried up. So let's look that dried up. It just says dried up. So maybe it turned to stone. I'm thinking it was it was uh his hand became like hard like a rock. All right. To make dry to with it withered. Withered. Become dry and shriveled. Without moisture. All right. So I guess you use your imagination what it actually looked like I'm, I'm thinking of fruit like a lemon or a lime after it starts to lose its moisture it becomes yeah it becomes hard hard like a rock but it goes through different stages you know of dryness all right so that's a grievous curse all right so, so we'll finish this off then we'll complete the prophecy all right it says, and he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said to him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. All right. Let's turn to um, 14 verse. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel and the works which he had done. So maybe this was an Ephraimite. All right, because uh, the northern kingdom used to worship in Bethel. I'm not sure who it belonged to eventually, Bethel. But I know it, Ephraimites used to worship there. Uh, ancient place and seat of worship of Ephraim in the border of Benjamin identified with Luz. So there you go. Then it says it's a place in Judah also. All right. So, more than likely, I was uh, is Ephraimite, or one of the northern kingdoms, the prophets, all right, that deceived the Judite prophet by the word of Yahweh, all right, all right. So he went back and ate bread with him. So, so long as we are obedient, we got power with 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 the Most High, with His Son. All right, angel is going to protect us. But if we become disobedient, we're left without a cover. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. An angel spoken to me. What well, the scripture say about it, even if an angel come from heaven, you're not supposed to listen. That speak a different word. All right. It says an angel, an angel spake unto me by the word of Yahweh, saying, bring him back with thee unto thine house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied unto him so he went back with him and did eat bread in his in his house and drank water right. and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of Yahweh came unto the prophet that brought him back. And I can't wait till Yahweh Shah's elect get this power again. Alright. This closeness that the prophets had, you know, with with the uh, the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah, we're going to get that Yahweh Shai Rajasa. Because it, it wasn't in a dream. It was while they were eating at the, whatever it was. So when they were sitting at the table, they started hearing voices in his head. <laughs> Hope he get that power back. <laughs> well, the scripture said that even greater works than these. So if we, if the Yahweh Shai is elect, Yahweh Shai Rajasa, we're among that number. Going to have uh, greater power than the acts that Yahweh Shai showed during his ministry it's, it's very likely that we're going to get this uh first kings 13 to 20 power back also and he cried unto him saying uh, he cried unto the man of god that came from judah saying thus saith the lord for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of yahweh and has not kept the commandment which yahweh thy god commanded thee but came his back and has eaten bread and drinking water in this place of which Yahweh did say eat to the eat no bread and drink no water thy carcass shall come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers all right and then what happened he got put to death and when he came was gone a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it the lion also stood by the carcass. It says, and behold, and behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in a way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And Bethel is probably an Ephraimite or one of the tribes, Northern Kingdom tribes that dwell in it. Uh, in Bethel at the time. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh hath delivered him into the lion, uh, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake unto him. All right. All right, so, he, so the prophet, the, the, say the, say the Ephraimite prophet brought that, that Judite body back and mourned uh you know because that was his brother uh, but the lord wanted that prophet put to death and that's a horrible you know turn of events i pray that doesn't happen to any of us uh you know prophet the carcass of the man and god and laid it upon the ass and brought it back and the old prophet came to the city and mourned and buried him all right so Let's go back up to the, uh, the prophecy. Because it was prophesied that the bone was going to be burnt in the altar or something like that. Let's see. Uh, um, it says uh, Joash by name. And Joash is going to be doing this. And upon thee uh, he shall offer the priest of the high places and burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So we go to Second Kings. So this prophecy took a little while to come to pass. Second Kings, I have it up here, twenty-three. All right, it's, it says reformer Joash. So Joash was was a great king. I can read about him. I haven't read this in a while. So, uh, and Joash also, and as Joash uh, turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burnt them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of Yahweh, which the man of God pro proclaimed uh, from Judah, uh, the Judite prophet that was put to death, uh, who proclaimed these words. All right. So it took a little while for it to come to pass. So that's, that's a lesson there. You know, so it's not some prophecies don't happen immediately. They take time to, to come to fruition. That prophecy took place in 1 Kings 13th chapter. And we're in 2 Kings 23rd chapter. All right, right now when the prophecy came to pass. And he said, what title is uh, that I see? And the men of the uh, city told it. It is a sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. All right. So even though the prophet went off, the Lord was still working with him. He still had the Holy Spirit for that time being. I mean, then the Lord took it from him when he disobeyed. All right. 
and it, and he said, uh, let him alone, let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. Uh, and all the house and all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria which the kings kings of Israel had made to provoke Yahweh to anger Joash took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done and he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem so where uh where they were worshiping, all right? Where the Ephraimites are worshiping, yeah. all right? In Bethel, Joash burned, killed those prophets, and burned them on the, and burned them at Jerusalem. Right? It says he burned them at Jerusalem, all right? And so Bethel was uh, where they were. I believe where the prophet where the prophets were worshiping. In uh, in Samaria. All right. And the bone, they, those priests were, were burned up in uh, Jerusalem. I said a prophecy came to pass. All right, that the Judite that was put to death, uh, proclaimed, while he was in Bethel. All right. So that stern warning. Uh, name of the lesson a uh, warning probably going to be somewhere along those lines uh, you put your hands on the prophets all right even if eventually they want to go off in the future that's how much power the lord will uh, put you no know, in his word all right he this prophet eventually went off but job jeroboam put his hands on him just touched him to arrest him all right because he said that the uh, the altar was going to be broken. Wrestle right means here, being broken up. Joe Boyam's hand turned the, the the stone; it dried out. All right, just by putting his hands on the prophets. Uh, now you go to what? <laughs> Revelation eleven and five. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. That was an example of fire. All right. He put his hands on a prophet. His hand, his hand dried up. So that's basically, like, that's basically like a death touch. All right. He's up these you know wicked ass Israelites and the Edomites think they're going to put their hands on the prophets. Hey, that that could happen. You could put your hands on us and you could just turn to dust. All right. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. All right. So that's the power that Yahweh Shai is going to give his elect. All right. Although you're going to have minimal casualties, you know. Ultimately, the whole elect that are uh, prophesied to be delivered from Babylon and from the various countries that were scattered around the world, all right, we're going to be we're going to have a shield, a hedge about us. All right, and Acts third, uh, First Kings thirteenth chapter is a good example of that. All right, and it's a lesson. So as long as we remain obedient, for the main part, Yahweh Shai is going to protect us. All right, Proverbs nineteen twenty: Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. All right. So let's get keep protection on us now and in the end. All right, which the end is here. Uh, we got Achar Yath uh, after part end and issue event latter time prophetic for future time. All right, let's keep that power that if a man come and put his hands on us, that's going to be the end of him. All right, imagine that every person has ever, that has ever put their hands on on the prophets they're they're uh they're in a worse state or they're dead right now Talking about as of uh from uh, uh well every time really but you know from from the time of our, our elders ministry in the late 80s well even their teachers they're uh 
their elders, you know, those people that put their hands on us, the Lord ends up uh, putting uh, heavy curses on them, either kills them or they end up uh, sick. Or, they, or they, you know, somebody in the community take them out. All right. But that's the end of those people that put their hands on us. All right. If you put your hands on the prophets, you will end up turning to dust. All right. So that's a warning to be obedient to the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's word and encouragement and protection that if anybody abuses us, all right, their hand going to turn. Like the hand of Gerald Boyams. Right? It dried up. Alright. Yabash. Alright, to make dry with her become dry. Alright. So I'll leave that there. Hope you edified. Shalom.